Good morning, my photography friends. Here I am, bright early morning. Now I've got these two little beauties here, my lo-fi specialties, my uh, Olga 120 pan, <clears throat> and my, my Bel Air, my Bel Air 612. Why do I have both these cameras? Well, I'm trying to decide which one I want to take with me to Japan in the summer. I don't want to take both. I don't want to take one that I'm not happy with. I have a little bit more experience with this one than I do of this one. In fact, I only used this one once. I've probably used this one three times. So anyways, I'm going to try and figure that out today. I've got HP5 in both of them, and I'm only going to, because of the format 612, I only have, what, six exposures, which is fine by me. I won't have to be here very long. I can get home and I can develop. So anyways, I'm going to wander around and I'm going to take pictures. And I probably should say I do have tripod just in case. Both of them with quick release on the bottom. I might get to be able to use my little cable release adapter for the Holga. This one doesn't have any cable release feature. It has bulb mode. Hopefully I won't have to go into long shutter speeds. I can just carry and click. Let's get going. That was fun. Not fun with two cameras, switching them in and out, and then trying to remember the pan. Olga pan has to be on odd numbers, and the Bel Air has to be on even numbers. So I think I screwed up some shots on the Bel Air. I believe I double exposed a couple of them. That's okay. It's good to uh, work out all those kinks anyways before I take them over to Japan for serious photography. And I'm not going to take both of them. I hope I'm not taking both of them. I just want to take one, and that is the point of this exercise. I'm trying to find which one I feel more comfortable with. Out of the lo-fi, this is lo-fi, the pan. Holga pan. Probably bring along... Um, a Holga 120N as well, <laughs> along with a... So which camera do you guys think I'll, I'll like or I'll be more comfortable with? The Bel Air or the Holga? Let's go back to my darkroom and develop the film. See you guys there. Okay, I've got both cameras in my darkroom and I've got to unload the film load them into the tank. I'm going to develop them together in XDAL R. One thing that I need to be aware of when I'm opening up the back of these cameras is that quite possibly the film could have fat rolled. That could be a little bit hazardous. It could let light in and open up the back. So I'm going to do that with the light off. I'll be back in a second. I'll let you know what happened. All right, neither of them fat rolled. This is the Bel Air roll, and this is the Olga roll. I, would, I don't want any fat roll when I'm in Japan. I want to be able to um, change film on the fly. Okay, now I need to get these rolls in the tank, developed in x R, and we'll have a look at it. Here we go. are on the bottom. Hold this on the
Well, here they are. Bel Air negatives and the Holga pen size-wise very different. Look how big the Holga negatives are compared to the Bel Air negatives. Let's check the size. So Holga negatives, 12 centimeters. Just over five centimeters. The Bel Air, just over 10 centimeters in length and just over five. So width wise, they're the same. But length, length, look at the difference. This is 612. I'll accept that as 612. That's not. But because the Bel Air has built in exposure system, the negatives are exposed nicely. Um, you can see I did some double exposures. Jeez. So gotta pay attention to that. If you look at my Holga panoramic negatives, they're a bit thinner except for that one. That one's really thin. That one's a little bit better. It's okay but thin. It's okay. It's still a bit thin to my liking. And this one's really thin. I should have used my light meter and worked in the bulb setting. Let's scan them in and take a closer look.